Hello, my name is Jérôme Vieillant and I'm a developer advocate at Blackfire.io. In this video, you will discover a full demonstration of Blackfire. We'll see how it can help developers to improve the performance of their application. Blackfire is a performance profiling and testing tool for Python, among other programming languages. It enables you to have detailed information on how your code is being executed and how it consumes resources. Blackfire can safely be installed on any machine. We support Linux, macOS, and Windows. Blackfire generates no overhead at all for end users. Thanks to our automated instrumentation technology, only the requests which are triggered for profiling purposes are instrumented. That's why it is fully safe to use Blackfire even on production servers. Let's take an example by running Blackfire on a demo application. This is a small blog-like application written with Django. We deployed it on a production server where we also installed Blackfire components. It is possible to profile this application in two different ways, either using the browser extension we support Chrome and Firefox, or using the command line with a Blackfire curl command. The result is the same, except that curl gives you more flexibility and supports post-request profiling. More options to start profiling exist, such as via the Python SDK or using builds. Let's profile an article page with a browser extension. Running a profile may take a few seconds or more, depending on how your application is built. By default, Blackfire profiles your application 10 times, aggregates and averages the data to make it more reliable. Once the profile is available, we directly get information on the total wall time, CPU time, IO time, memory, network calls, HTTP requests, and SQL queries. By clicking on either of those dimensions, we will be displayed the corresponding call graph. The main advantage of call graphs is that such displays give you a lot of context elements and the bigger picture. The nodes represent single function calls, called many times by several callers, or calling many times several callees. Aggregating information in nodes enables to track down which part of the application is consuming more resources, but always in relation to others. For instance, we often get the question, how do I view only my business logic, not including the framework stuff? Well, in many cases, you probably actually do not want to do that. Your application is dependent on its usage of the framework and or the libraries used, and vice versa. Not displaying how the framework is consuming resources because of your code makes you miss out on a lot of valuable information. So, how do you know if this call has been made before that other one? or if the first call of some function took longer than the other ones of the same function. Because of its aggregating property, the call graph cannot answer those questions. The timeline view is here to help. On the x-axis, the timeline represents single function calls when they happened since the beginning of the script execution. On the y-axis, Calls are nested in their call stack levels, from top to bottom, so that you can also inspect all parent calls that led to any specific call. As we do for the call graph, the 1% less significant calls are removed, which makes profiles lighter and easier to read. The timeline also detects special function calls and groups them by metrics using colored blocks. This allows to quickly spot them by looking at the legend. Metrics can also be user-defined, as we will see later in the demo. Let's look at our specific example on the wall time call graph. Color codes will help us determine very fast where is the performance bottleneck in our code. 
Colored borders show the slowest path in the code, or in other words, the sequence of calls which consume the highest percentage of resources versus the other calls in the request. Colored backgrounds show the calls which, on their own, discarding any colly, consume a higher percentage than the others. The brighter the color, the higher the percentage. In our case, DB model's comment under init function comes first. It takes a significant amount of time to execute, around 25% of the total time. Although this relates to one of our model classes, it is managed by Django, and nothing special is done within our class. As a result, it cannot be optimized. But we can try to lower the number of times it is called. We'll have to climb up in the call graph throughout framework components to find the source of the issue in the user.getRecentCommon count and user activity text nodes. The user.getRecentCommon count method is called 21 times and accounts for 57% of the total execution time. That's a lot. Let's look at the code itself. Apparently, getRecentCommonCount returns the number of comments a user made within the last three months. But to do this, it loads all the comments the user ever made and loop over them to filter them out, which makes the operation inefficient. Operating the comments count with the appropriate filter using Django models instead seems to be more efficient as it will result in an optimized SQL query. Let's check if the result is satisfying. We've deployed the fix, so let's profile it. One of the greatest features in Blackfire is that you are able to compare two profiles and display the resources consumption difference between two versions of your code. Everything that is in blue is a performance improvement, everything in red a regression. Here, the call graph clearly shows that our application performance improved. And that's it. In less than five minutes, in a code base we knew nothing about before, we've already found a performance bottleneck and written a patch. You can't optimize what you can't measure. And Blackfire is one of the most accurate consumption measurement tools for Python on the market. But it provides even better ways to make sure that all of your application can be checked. It can be used as an automated performance testing tool, no matter what infrastructure, tooling or workflow you might currently have. Meet the Blackfire builds. Blackfire builds provide a very flexible way to have your code performance tested in any test, staging or production environment, including in continuous integration workflows. Writing performance tests with Blackfire is as simple as creating a new .blackfire.yaml file in the root directory of an application. This file will be deployed along with the code. It will contain the definition of your metrics, tests and scenarios. Some simple tests can be written, for instance, on the wall time or the memory. But assertions on these dimensions are actually very weak. Time is not a stable metric. External factors, such as machine load, can have significant impacts on wall time between two profiles of identical code. Volatile tests must be avoided at all costs, as they make your test suite less reliable and degrade the trust your team has in any failures. Blackfire comes with many built-in metrics, but you can also create your own. Our application makes extensive use of model instantiation, especially regarding the comment model. This test will help us check the number of all instantiated models. Let's also create a new metric to keep an eye on the user.getRecentCommonsCount method specifically, as it was the main starting point of our performance bottleneck.
That's also where you can add the Timeline True setting to view that specific metric in a timeline. The Marker True setting gives the ability to add a marker in the timeline each time the metric is incremented. In the same YAML file, we will be able to determine a scenario for which we want to automatically run our test. Manually triggering profiles on specific URLs like we did previously works well on development environments, but it does not scale well for integration, staging, or production testing. Now that we defined our metrics, tests, and scenarios, we need to trigger the builds. That can be done, for instance, with periodic builds, if your code is in production, using one of our native integrations, or using a generic webhook, which you can use with any of your tools. Anytime a new build report is available, you can be notified in various ways. That can be email, Slack, or Microsoft Teams. It can be directly at the commit status level in GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. Or it can also be via our webhook. Let's start a build. The build report will give you an overview of all of the test results you've run on your application as defined in your .blackfire.yaml file. For any failed scenario, you will be able to have a look at the corresponding profile or the comparison with the previous build iteration. With the new metric in place, we can see when the problematic function is being called. Thanks to the markers, each call is immediately visible. Now, an even faster way of challenging your application performance will be with the help of our built-in performance recommendations. According to our expertise and our partners, we've returned default tests. We'll be able to let you know if your code doesn't comply with some of our best practices for generic Python, Django or Flask. A full documentation is available to describe exactly why we set such a best practice and how you can solve the issue. If you are not sure where to start when writing tests, recommendations are a great head start. Start by adding a few scenarios in your .blackfire.yaml file and check if we detect anything. If we do, You'll always be able to copy-paste the code snippet at the end of the doc to build your first non-regression test. This rounds up our demo. There's a lot more Blackfire can do for you, and we strongly encourage you to have a look at our documentation section at blackfire.io slash docs. Should you have any issue, we'll be happy to help you from our support site at support.blackfire.io.